Alright guys, I've been getting a lot of requests in OpenJS Grid to show you how to do the hard stuff. Now, I, I will be the first to admit that I did not document the hard stuff, and I apologize. Uh, documentation takes a while. But let it be known that there you can do complex things with this grid. And so one of so the last one I did the master detail page. This time I'm going to do some custom functions, some adding of columns and some custom key up events and things like that. I'm going to show you a bit around some of the methods that make OpenJS grid kind of really powerful to do anything with. Uh, this also caused me to make a couple bug fixes, so that's good. So on the right here, well, I guess I'm going to zoom it in for you. Uh, this is the standard demo page you get. So let's just, let's, I'm going to remove a bunch of stuff from here that I don't need for this demo. So we're going to remove these commented out guys. We're going to remove all of these. We'll leave that one. We'll get rid of hash bang. We'll make this a type text so we can edit it. We'll remove this money, make that text. We'll remove these hrefs because we don't need linking for the demo. And we'll remove that. We'll remove this whole thumbnail column. We got those three fields. Awesome, that's fine. Uh, we're going to remove all of these except the load complete. We'll keep that. We'll remove the cell types. We don't need that. We don't need deleting checkboxes, row numbers. Uh, again, we don't need deleting. I know the demo has that twice. A lot of you have noticed that. Thank you. We don't need that. We don't. That's just the default. We don't need that at all. Editing will leave on. Okay, so save and refresh. Boom, grid, couple things editable. There we go. So let's, what do we want to do here? So the request that came in was he's making, he's making a, uh, what was he making? In invoice, invoicing thing, right? So, so he's got a lot of custom functions and some custom functionality. So he wants a total column, right? He wants a total column that does some math using the grid. And then when you key on the grid, he wants that math to like automatically update and then update the database when you key up. Right, so let's do that. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to have this. We're going to have a function that calculates something. So let's write our function. So function calc. This is just whatever. We're going to pass it the price and pass it. I only have these two numbers. You wouldn't really multiply these, but eh, it's a simple equation. So it's going to take the price and the tutorial ID, and we're just going to return price times tutorial ID, and we're going to say that two fixed to two decimal places. This is just a random calculation. You can do whatever you want here. Doesn't matter. Random calculation. We want it to be a function though because we're going to need it twice. Well, why do we need it twice? Well, first things first, we need to add our total column. So we're going to dynamically add a column. Now this is outlined on the docs. <laughs> so where is it? Here you go. So here's here's this dynamically. We're gonna write, I'm gonna write it for you. But over here is the demo for this. So this does work. So let's do that now. So we are going to do. So uh, let's let's actually. So uh, let me explain something. Load completes the event. E is the event itself. Grid is the grid object. That's not actually like how you call methods though. You you can call methods directly on this, but you guys are used to jQuery, which is the whole point of this plugin. So we're going to store a reference. So this is actually a reference to your grid object itself. Okay? So we're actually going to wrap and let me show you. Let me just show you. So console.log grid, that's the first thing. And then console.log um, this. So let me just show you the difference between these two because I think that's important. Okay. So you see the first one is like a data object, like it's got all the data, and the second one is the actual element. With jQuery, in, in any jQuery plugin, you call methods on the DOM element. So what I've done here is, the, is this is the DOM element you're going to call methods on. If you wanted to, you could be hardcore and call the methods right on grid itself, but we're going to keep things consistent and we're not going to use grid. Okay, this is the this is the object itself. You can explore it. That's where all these functions are, but we're just going to do this as if we're just doing some straight jQuery. So we're going to store var grid equals, and we're going to wrap it in this. So this is now jQuery set up, ready to go. To make any kind of method call with OpenJS grid, you take your grid and you do uh, dot grid and you pass your method name. So method name here, right? And then you would pass like param, right? That's how you use methods. So let's talk about the add column method. So add column. So add column takes an object. Now, 
the object takes a few things. Well, actually, take that back. The second column is the title, the, the like the key that we want this to be. So we're going to call this total, right? So add column is the method name. We're going to pass it two things, total and this object. So we're going to call it, we're going to give it a width. This column is going to have a width of 160. We're going to insert at, and you can, again, look at the docs for this, but this is going to be where we wanted to insert it. We want to insert it at the end, which is actually the default. We're going to give it a header. So what do you want the cell header to be? And it's going to say total with a capital T. Um, then we want to have a cell class. So the point of a cell class is so that we actually put a class on the cell for use later. So we're going to give that total as well. That's going to help us when we do some dynamic stuff. And that, that's pretty much it, right? The last thing that you have after the object is a function. And the function is going to take an, an index, so what kind of row I'm at, and it's going to take row data. And that's going to be the whole data of the row itself. So let's close that off, and we're just going to do, um, let's just console.log i for a second, just for the hell of it. OK, refresh. And you can see we've got total and then undefined. Why is it undefined? Because we actually haven't returned anything. Just for the heck of it, let's just do return i just to show you. There we go. So we've made a total column dynamically, and we've returned something, and that's the value. Now, row data, let's take a look at row data for a second. You should get familiar with row data. It's like super, super useful. So here's row data. It literally is the row data. So we have two, there's title and price and tutorial ID. So title, price, tutorial ID. It's all right here. It's great. So, and even if you had modified the row, the row data would still be intact. So the row data is like super, super powerful. So what do we want to return? Well, let's, we want to calculate our total. So we're going to say var total equals, and we're going to call our calc function. And we're going to say row data dot price, and we're going to pass it row data dot tutorial ID, right? We're going to give it those two things to calc against. And then first, let's just do return total. And there you go. Awesome. But you know what? Let's make our code even shorter and just return the result of that calc function. Boom. Done. Calculated the function. Awesome. But we still need now to calculate when we key up. OK? Now, I don't, unfortunately, give you some sort of key up event listener for that. So we got to use a little knowledge of jQuery here to do that for us. OK? So to do that, we need to put we need to add a event to the grid itself. Now, a lot of you have been wondering and been confused as to what happens to the class. Like, see how it's class grid and class users? And a lot of you are like, well, what the hell? Why does my grid, this is the object, why does it have my classes? Well, that's because I didn't tell you that you can actually give it a class here. Say class user. I, I probably should do this for you, but you know, whatever. So now you can see it says class user. So now I can actually do things like, well, we're done with this for now. Now I can do things like dot users, and let's do div dot users, right? Because there's a, yeah, whatever. Div dot users. So that's our actual like grid now. So we can do things on it. So we're going to do on, and I say key up. Now we're going to do key up. So we need to target this cell here. So how do we do that? Well. Uh, it's unique because it's in a column, which is why columns are so awesome. So call equals price. So we can target that by saying call equals, oops, quotes. We can say call equals price. And then once we have that, we need to look for the dots, the dot input. That's um, right here, right? Dot input, which is like the editable input. And then we'll do uh, function spelled right. So now I can just do console.log here, right? And now if I key, boom, here. Awesome. Great job. So now what we need to do, now that we've done that, uh, I'm going to write out some a few steps. We're going to get the row ID, right? We're going to use the row ID to get the row data, right? Then we're going to use our function to do math. Then we're going to get the last row, and then we're going to replace the value of the last row, right? So those are the steps. So get the row ID. Well, the row ID is actually on the parent cell. So I guess the first step is get the parent cell, right? That's kind of the first step. So var cell equals this dot closest, closest dot cell, right? So that's the closest cell we have. 
and then var row ID equals cell dot attribute data dash row and then we need to get the row data so we're gonna say um, and let's let's you know reference to our grid so var grid because we need to make API calls so we're gonna say uh, this right so that well actually that's not true it's gonna be our parent this guy let's just store that reference so we don't have to keep typing it so there's our reference to the grid okay so now we need to make an API call to get the row data. So we're going to say grid dot grid get row data, and we're going to pass it our row ID, okay? And then we're going to say that's going to be var row data equals. So real quick, let's console dot log row data. Make sure we're on the right page. Sorry if I'm going fast. I have a time limit. Awesome. Boom. Use our function to do math. So literally, it is the same function here because it's the same row data object. I told you row data was important. I'm going to say var total equals that guy. Get the last row. So now we're going to make a new method. We're going to say so. Actually, we're going to get all the cells now. So var cells equals grid dot dot grid. Let's make an API call. Um, get row. Now instead of get row data, we're going to call get row, which is going to give us the jQuery elements, because we actually need to modify it now, right? So now we're going to pass it row ID, and then we're going to say um, replace the value. So cell that text is total. There we go, done. Uh, so now if I type in here and change the value, yeah, duh. I need to actually replace my cell, <laughs> not all cells. This is actually all cells. Uh, so get the last, yeah, get, yeah, get the rows cells, and now I need to get the total cell. So we have to do cell dot filter, and remember we gave it a class of dot total. There's a reason we did that, right there. So var cell equals cells dot filter. So now we can do that, and boom, boom, boom. Boom, big numbers. Okay. Well, you're like, Sean, this one doesn't work. You're right, that one doesn't work. Well, that one's tutorial ID. So let's just add the key up to both of these by just putting it there, comma, call equals, whoops, tutorial ID, right? Boom, refresh, and, whoops, numbers. Okay? And you could do more calculations, more whatever, whatever. This looks like a lot. It's only a couple lines, and I, I really broke it out for you. It doesn't have to be broken out as much as I have, but I'm just I'm just trying to show you the API methods. Okay, so things like things like getting the getting the row ID from anywhere is important. Things like the row data is super important. This is an API call I gave you to do this. Um, things like getting the row itself. This is an API call I give you to do things like this. Okay, just to show you. If you wanted to, at this point, you could do AJAX to save that data. Right save that data and you would have to Ajax it and then you would have to write a save method um, it's your own custom save so it's nothing I can do about that uh, yeah there, there may be something else we can do about that but right now once you have the data if you want to save it it's it's your own dynamic column with your own custom save so you know that's that um, right so the next thing uh, let me check time Okay, so time's up for this. I'm going to paste one last thing in here because people ask for it, which is adding an add button. I'm not going to be able to tell you about it, but here's code to add an add button, which will do nothing but reload the grid. You could put Ajax here. Boom, there's an add button. When I click it, it refreshes the grid. Uh, thanks for watching.